What is going on guys, Rajai Knight coming at you with some Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited for the PlayStation 4. I am doing a review, um, it's something that I haven't been able to do very much because I really don't get new games very often. Uh, when I got The Witcher 3, it had already been out for a couple weeks and I didn't see much of a point in doing a review because there was nothing that I could add that had not already been iterated hundreds of times across YouTube and other platforms. So I didn't bother doing a review for that, but this one, I've got to talk about it. Um, there's been a lot of mixed reviews over the past year and a half on this game. And at least for the console version, I want to set the record straight. So first up, character creation. Wow. Um, just like Skyrim, you have tons of different options. you got nine different races to choose from. And you have the four different classes that you can choose from on top of that, which just determines your beginning skill set. Um, what is a higher rank starting out? It doesn't matter as much, though. Uh, you can choose any race and put in any class and use that class for anything. So if you want to be a tank, um, instead of just going solely for Dragonite, you can go for Templar and throw some heavy armor on him and use the self-regenerating spells that the Templar has because the Templar has great healing abilities. And then you can regenerate your own health, which allows you to go for push forward a lot easier and not have to worry about your party actually helping you out. But, you know, you got Archer, you got Mage, uh, you could be a healer either by using magic or you could be a healer um, by just the regular abilities because there are restoration staffs. You could be a destruction mage. Um, you could be a, su a summoning mage where you just summon a whole bunch of different creatures to come in and help you fight. So there's a lot of options. Obviously, one-handed, two-handed, dual wield is all in here. So I really like that. One thing that they added with this that I'm absolutely in love with is you can dye your armors. Um, one of the problems I always had with Skyrim was that the armors didn't always look the way I wanted them to. And you can see the character that I'm using right now. It's uh, black and white. Um, you actually using a guild uh, costume over the armor, which is the white... I guess it, I don't even know what you'd call it. It's the, just something that the guild can put on. It costs 2,000 gold in the guild store. But um, my armor's been painted black. Uh, at least parts of it. Some of it I've kept the silver just to give it that little bit of a shine. But I love those customization options. And on top of that, each race has its own armor style. But you're not limited to that style. Obviously, if you're smithing the armor yourself then you're at first you're going to be limited solely to that style but you can find racial motifs to unlock the different race styles um i'm a level 11 i'm about to get level 12 here and i already have two other racial styles on top of the red guard which is what i am i actually chose red guard for no particular reason i just chose one got through the character creation you can change just about every aspect of your character. The spacing between the eyes, spacing between your eyebrows, your butt size. Yes, I'm not kidding. You can change your butt and your boob size for your character. You can change the height, which is another thing that I'm happy about. Because if you're a shorter person and you want a shorter character to represent you, you can do that. Or if you're short and you want to be tall for the first time in your life, you can make your character ridiculously tall. Graphic-wise, the game looks really good. Um, I, there's been a few little issues here and there uh, with uh, pop-in. For the most part, though, it hasn't been much of an issue. Now, as far as the gameplay goes, there is lag. I know a lot of people were saying that this game was going to launch lag-free. It did not launch lag-free. There is a ton of lag, particularly in the towns. Other than that, um, I haven't noticed too much. It's, the lag is mostly around the towns, and the worst one, um, fighting an enemy, and, you know, I run away from the fight, you know, he wasn't taking any damage, so I went ahead and ran away and tried putting my sword up so I could get back in town. He wouldn't put the sword up. He was stuck with his arm up in the air, and, yeah. Uh, right here, you can see just a little bit of the skill trees. I go ahead, since I leveled up, and get my first ultimate ability. Um, not 
too excited about it. I'm planning on becoming a vampire anyways, which has some of the most powerful PvP ultimates in the game. Um, as far as PvP goes, the vampire is almost overpowered. Um, but yeah, the gameplay is pretty solid. Um, there is a little bit of a griefing thing going right now. Um, I haven't noticed it personally, but I've heard some other players talking about it. You'll go into a uh, four-player dungeon with a random in there, and he'll just spend his entire time letting you do the fighting and looting the chests. Because when the chest is emptied, it's emptied. Nobody else can get into it. So he steals all the loot, and for the dungeons, if you're not just doing them for XP, that is the main way that you're going to get your um, loot. You're not going to get a whole lot. But, yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. And right here, I'm about to use my ultimate on these little imp, imp things. So, it knocks them back. It does a decent amount of damage, but I'm not too excited about how much damage it does. It doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, smithing, every race has their armors, but you can craft anything, so that definitely helps. I st I'm sticking with the Red Guard. I like how the Red Guard armor looks. For me personally, Wood Elves has a lot of bone on it. Um, obviously, the Nord has a lot of fur on it. So it really hits your personal preference and what it is you plan on wearing. You know, do you want heavy armor, medium armor, light armor? Are you just going to wear enchanted robes everywhere and things like that? Uh, the quest lines, there's a lot of different quest lines. Each guild has its own quest line, and there are three guilds that you're going to be able to uh, work with. You got the Fighters Guild, the Mages Guild, and the Undaunted. Now the Undaunted may not actually be a guild, it may just be a quest line that you can unlock. I consider them a guild because you actually choose whether or not you want to join them. It's not something that you would typically just come across. But other than that, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of negative things that I can say about the game. Uh, as an MMO, you do have a lot of players running around, but there's only one area on the map that's PvP, and that's Cyrodiil. And you don't even unlock Cyrodiil until level 10. So you already know the controls of the game. You've had a chance to level your health up and get your skills. <laughs> Other than that, though, you're not going to have a whole lot of issues. Um, occasionally, you'll find players that'll be sitting around farming enemies in the same area that you're trying to do a quest. That can get a little annoying, but usually if you just keep running around, you'll eventually get through it. And sometimes it can end up helping you. I've had several times where I've been in a fight, got myself into trouble, and another player just happened along and, man, and actually helped me and kept me alive. Um, the other thing about it is, that, is uh, random events. There's public events. If you guys play Destiny, you know all about the public event system. Um... It's just randomly, random events that happen throughout the game. Now this guy up here that's uh, standing in front of me, well behind my character right now, is uh, my uh, group leader. He's just a friend of mine. Um, decided I wanted to do a few uh, emotes just to get a laugh. But yeah, it was fun. Um, other than that, I, I can't really think of a whole lot else to say about it. It's just a really, really fun game to play. The social side of it isn't... There's no text chat. Um, that was something I was kind of hoping that they would have is a little ch a text chat, but they did give us the emotes. There is a local chat. It's not uh, necessarily just public chat. It's area so if you're within the area, if you're close to them, then their voice is really loud. If you're further away from them, their voice is softer, which is a nice little touch. But honestly, I tend to turn that off because it is really annoying when you're sitting here trying to find something and all you hear is Joe Blow over here yelling at his little brother to get out of his room. It gets really annoying really quickly, but it's not the end of the world. You do tend to just kind of get out of it. There's also a guild chat which every guild member can get into and then you can have your group chat. Um, one thing about the groups, you can only group with members of your faction. So if you have friends that started before you or come in after you and start uh, in a different faction, you won't be able to group with them even if you're in the same guild because you can be in a guild regardless of your faction but you can't group together. 
So my personal recommendation, if you have friends on different guild or different factions, make a character for each faction and just split your playtime between them or get one of them leveled up to a high level and then start a new one and get him leveled up to a high level and so on and so forth. The main storyline is pretty much the same regardless of your faction, but it, it will take you to some di slightly different areas and you'll get slightly different loot. So it's not the end, it's not too bad. Each faction has its own starting city. Um, you know, it's just they've put a lot of detail into it. As far as the lore goes, I know a lot of ESO fans are, or not ESO, um, Elder Scrolls fans rather, are really interested in the lore of the game. This does not follow the lore. Um, unfortunately, it breaks character in just about every regard to Elder Scrolls lore. Which is unfortunate, but, you know, it, it's okay. Um, they've, I think the way that they're going to end up explaining away the lore breaks is through dragon breaks in Elder Scrolls 6, but we will see how they decide whether they even acknowledge this as part of the Elder Scrolls games or if they're just going to make it a little offshoot. But, yeah, all in all, I give this game a very, very high score. You have got to play it. Um, it is tons of fun, uh, especially whenever you're in a group. You can play it solo. Um, I play solo a lot. Even when I'm in a group, I tend to do the quest by myself. So even though it is an MMO, you don't have to group up for everything. Now, there are some missions that you're going to want to do that you're going to have to group up with and have somebody help you. But you're not going to have to worry about it too much. Now, here in a second, I'm going to go ahead and sneak up on my friend up there since he wanted to play dead. And we're going to have a little fun with him. Really, this is a game, though, that the pacing is actually pretty good. Um, the skills take a little while to actually take effect. And here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's what this game is about right here. Get ESO, you get to see stuff like this. Yes. And that guard's just going to walk away like nothing happened. But I definitely recommend this game. If you like MMOs, if you like Elder Scrolls, or if you're just curious about trying it out, there is no subscription that you have to pay in order to play the game. Though, if you do get the subscription, you will level up faster. Um, and you'll get some free crowns that you can use in the crown store. I mean, there's benefits to getting it, but it's not a necessity in order to play. You don't get any extra content for being on the ESO Plus subscription list. Um, at least nothing that you couldn't buy as a DLC. Though you do get, you know, extra costumes and stuff like that. You do level up faster, which I know is a huge draw for a lot of people who are wanting to hurry up and get into PvP. I have not gone into PvP. I do have it unlocked. Um, I just haven't really gotten into uh, doing that. I really want to hit level 50 before I jump into that. But other than that, you know, I don't have anything else for the game. Um, like I said, it's a great game. You guys have got to try it out. It is tons of fun to play it. So that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you have any questions about the game. Anything that I didn't cover with crafting, with materials, ex exploration, or anything like that. Leave it in the comments section below and I will try my best to get back to you guys with it. I normally have the opportunity to respond to every single comment that I get. But there are some that slip under my radar. Uh, not normally, but usually I try to get to them. So definitely leave any questions that you have in the comment section down below. And if you are interested in joining our guild, leave a comment down below. And if you are on PlayStation 4, we will get you. We are in the um, Covenant, I believe. I would actually have to check because I forgot to do that. But yes, don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next.